Mummy, Daddy's carving skulls again. Yes, and it's a very different skull this time. Stay tuned to see what I'm up to. A good few years ago now, I carved a couple of animal skulls. I did this one, which is sort of a steer or longhorn cow. English holly for the skull, and the uh, horns are African blackwood. I also did this ram skull. English holly and mapani wood for the horns. Over six years ago, I started work on this, which is a Cape buffalo skull, much bigger than the other ones that I've done. Um, and this is English yellow boxwood and African blackwood. The uh, drill bits are to replicate dowels which are going to hold these in place. Um, these slot on with, they'll slot on with African blackwood dowels. So this video, I'm going to be showing how I finished this. This was started long before I had a YouTube channel. This really is at the stage just after cutting it out on a bandsaw. This is the roughing out stage. I start using one of these sabre tooth burrs. These are very aggressive um, cutters carbide cutters and I'm rounding all the edges off here to make it horn shaped rather than block shaped just contouring the tip just keep working and working until it's round there we are nice shape but leave a rough finish here I'm marking out where it meets the skull and now I'm using a smooth fluted burr just to smooth off all those rough bits and then lots and lots of sanding took hours now we're on the lathe and I'm just using an offcut of African blackwood to create a dowel to fix the horns on. Just checking the diameter there. So I've glued the dowels into the horns so they can slot on and off. I'm just cutting off the uh, excess dowel and uh, cutting it flush with the rest of the blackwood. Then it's on to the buffing wheel and I'm using some Vonex polishing compound and I start buffing. The moment you start buffing it will reveal um, some little defects where it needs a bit more sanding. Uh, it's very difficult with blackwood to tell exactly uh, where these areas are until you start buffing. So I buff it a bit and then I'm using a little buffing wheel on the Dremel to get into the awkward spots. And then I start sanding again in the areas where I can see it's not quite smooth. And then we do a bit more buffing. And I went backwards and forwards sanding and buffing until, uh, until I got it just right. Keep a firm hold on that while you're buffing, otherwise it'll grab it and throw it. So that's one half done. And there's both halves done. You know, both horns done. Yeah, what can I say? And then uh, marking out some details. And you can see my reference pictures. Different shaped uh, burr here. I had the reference pictures printed off um, in the workshop so I could keep referring to them. But here I'm using another quite aggressive uh, sabre tooth burr, just uh, removing as much bulk as I can. You've got to be careful. You can take away, but you can't put back on. So uh, consider each cut before you make it. I'm just whittling away at it, really. Leaving the area where the horns fix. Marking out the back of the skull where the uh, neck muscles insert. And I'm cutting back to that line. Uh, just more bulk removal. Defining the uh, shape of the jaw. And uh, as I say... You can take off, but you can't put back on. So just consider each cut before you make it. It's beginning to take shape now. Just putting the curve on the teeth. And going around the eye socket. And uh, now we're shaping the back of the skull again, where those neck muscles and jaw muscles insert. Changing burr quite a lot. These smooth fluted burrs get rid of the uh, rough surface left by the sabre tooth burrs. And this pear shaped burr is very useful. Back onto a more aggressive but thinner burr for doing some of these deeper grooves. Make short work of cutting these out. 
and they're cut in the big hole where the spinal cord goes, the foramen magnum. Doing the end grain, quite tricky the end grain to get a nice smooth finish. And shaping the where the atlas and axis connect to the neck. Just test fitting, checking proportions and fit. Pleased with how it's coming on. Checking my pictures again, changing burrs. Just doing some more shaping. Now starting to hollow out the palette area. Turn it bit by bit. Keep checking it. Don't get carried away on one area. Look at the uh, carving as a whole. Don't get too focused on one area because that's when you start messing up with uh, proportions. Starting to hollow out the eye now. And now it's starting to really look like a skull. I'm using an old sheep skull as a reference point for ruminant anatomy. Then we're back onto a bit more shaping. Yeah, and you see that lovely dust line on my head. Yeah, visual check with horns in place. Now using a little saw just to cut that central split that these skulls have. A smoother round burr now just for finishing off the inside of these orbits or eye sockets. And uh, reaching down into those awkward bits. Hollowing out the nose or the snores. Now marking out all the holes and using an awl just to define them. Now these skulls are covered in holes, so uh, I just chose the main ones really. I'm using a drill to drill them out and then a dremel to enlarge them and shape them. Just uh, using a little flame burr to shape that split. And now another smooth burr just for doing that zygomatic arch, just smoothing the inside of that. Yeah pleased with how that's coming on. Now I'm using cabinet scrapers, one of the profiled ones, uh, the round profile ones and uh, by angling it you can achieve most of these curve shapes and by using a cabinet scraper you get rid of all those little ridges left by the burrs and it saves you a lot of time sanding. Some areas need a bit of hand carving with my flex cut carving knife which I keep razor sharp and then sanding lots and lots of sanding I'm using 400 grit here because I don't want to create any deep scratches now this is a wood turning tool there's a carbide tip tool by easy wood tools and I'm using this as a little scraper for getting into some of those awkward profiles I've marked out the teeth I'm just using a knife here to uh, define each tooth by doing stop cuts, a little scorp chisel for scooping out the inside, a little chip carving knife here just for carving these teeth in, carving the shapes. Another easy wood tool, point tool, detail tool, just for scraping where I've been cutting. And that's the basic teeth shapes done. Using a Dremel here to put the grooves in that these ruminants have on their teeth. And now burning in the shape a little bit with a hot wire pyrography kit. So that's the teeth done. And I've penciled in all the little suture lines on the skull. Some I'm cutting in with a knife. Like this, the straighter ones. And I'm defining a bit more by using a carbide scraper. And some I'm engraving in the little wavy ones using uh, my Dremel with a very fine tip. Then lots more sanding. You can see how that's uh, looking now. Uh, starting at 400, going right up to 5000 grit. You can see it's actually quite shiny now. On to the buffing wheel. So I'm using the Vonax buffing compound on the buffing wheel. Keeping a firm hold on the skull. I don't want to lose it at this stage. Dremel for the more intricate bits. There you can see, lovely and shiny. Delighted with that. 
Renaissance wax. It's a microcrystalline wax, just a very, very thin coating over that, which I then buffed. And now we're epoxying the horns on. A bit of epoxy resin on those surfaces. Not much, because I don't want it to ooze. Another project complete. Delighted with how this has come out. But it has taken me many, many hours um, to get this finish on it and uh, the shape and everything. Hours and hours and hours. Uh, but it's all buffed up, waxed, polished, and uh, come out beautifully. The boxwood is just amazing. Um, and the African blackwood complements it very well. Boxwood is beautiful to carve. You get such intricate detail on it. Um, you know, really with a skull like this, it's, it's difficult to know how far to take the detail. It's such a detailed thing and uh, you could go on forever adding detail, but I think I got the balance about right. But I'll um, put some stills up at the end and uh, one on the turntable just so you can see, uh, see what it's uh, like. But there we are. Thank you so much for watching. Really appreciate it. And thank you very much to all my subscribers. And I had a lot of new subscribers lately and it's fantastic. So if you could uh, like, share and subscribe, that would be amazing. Yeah, share the video. It all helps. But there we are. African Cape Buffalo Skull. In English Boxwood and African Blackwood. And I'll be back again soon with some more videos. Thanks again for watching. Please like, share and subscribe. It costs nothing to subscribe and you'll be notified uh, when I put out another video. I've got lots more projects planned. There's a few shots of the skull just so you can see it in a bit more detail. Well, I hope you enjoyed watching. There it is in pieces, just shown before assembly and after assembly. More rubbish coming soon. And don't forget, Makers Central next year, 11th and 12th of May, Birmingham NEC. We've got some great people coming. Check out the website, www.makerscentral.co.uk. I'll see you all soon.